I'm reading this morning from 1 Corinthians 12. Just as a body, though one has many parts, but all of its many parts form one body. So it is with Christ. For we are all baptised by one spirit, so as to form the one body. Whether Jew or Gentile, slave or free, we are all given the one spirit to drink. Even so, the body is not made up of one but many parts. Now, if the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. If the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? In fact, God has placed the parts in the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, but one body. I started to think about us, the church, the body of Christ, with Jesus as our head. The speech here is figurative but it helps us to understand using our human body parts so that we can be clear as to what the whole body is. When someone is without part of their physical body, they can find some things more of a challenge in comparison to another who's got all of their body parts functioning well. The variations in us are evident. This is how we express ourselves to one another. Our own attributes can lead us into the wrong way of thinking when we identify ourselves solely by what we do. Pressure to be like others can cause detrimental effects on our well-being. 1 Corinthians 12 helps us to recognise that the smallest part, the small toenail on our body, is as necessary as our brain, though the function of those two parts are quite different. All believers are members of the body of Christ working in obedience to the head and in cooperation with others. Some of us feel really well connected, others don't, and some would discount themselves. We need to recognise who we are in the Father's eyes. We are deeply loved and reminded that we're to love one another. Members of the body share a common bond with all other Christians. There should be no division in the body. The body needs all its members. When we see diversity as being essential and normal to a healthy body, it will save us from two errors, from belittling ourselves and belittling others. We have been spiritually gifted so that we can glorify God and build each other up. We have been woven together with a new heart, we work together as one body. We no longer operate in our own strength. We are the people of God. We are a chosen people, a royal priesthood. We are new creations, not a patched up old one. We are spiritually alive. We can now believe and trust what God says about us. The deeper, this deeper revelation came came to me after I'd been reading a book around creating space to spend more time alone with God. I started to purposely create that space for being quiet and alone. My aim here this morning is to encourage you to spend time with God our Father and to play your part within the body, however you may feel about yourself. He is committed to our growth and he's so proud of his children. He is always with us but we can get so easily distracted by so many things. I quite like being busy. It gives some purpose, but our busyness can also be a huge distraction from being close to the Father's heart. We read and often hear that he who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. And I found that to be so very true. When the lockdown started, 
Rob and I got on with doing lots of jobs at home. And it felt great for us to be, be at home, catching up in the garden and doing jobs around the house. But after a couple of weeks, I started to feel a bit less connected to him. Yet we were together all the time. We had a bit of a row and our, our emotions, well, my emotions bubbled over. We, we, st and we, got to, we shared our frustrations and our thoughts and it left us both feeling really disconnected. We needed to get to a place where we could be settled again giving and receiving love. Being in the same room is not the same as taking time to connect and really connect well, to check in and to hear from one another. Jesus wants us to come and be with him, not just with our list of needs. They are endless and we need him more than we care to admit. Yet we still get distracted. My prayer is that through this unique time, we will obtain more self-discipline as we go towards the Father, that we would not let time slip through our days without giving him a second thought <coughs> because our lives have become just too busy. I am learning to enjoy times of solitude and I love it. In this place, we can understand more of the Father's heart for us, a place where we're all welcome, we can know the peace that goes beyond our understanding, that place of confidence, where we can be bold and courageous. Ephesians 2.10 says this, you are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Confidence comes when we know that we are secure and protected. Hebrews 4.16 says, Let us approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help others in our time of need. Romans 8.35 says that we cannot be separated from the love of God. Receiving his love extends our capacity to love others. We miss you all so much. We thrive when we're connected with the ones that we love. We build each other up as we stand together through the good and the difficult times. Many of us are finding these days a challenge and we can feel lost, left out, unloved and afraid. Drawing closer to the Father is where we find his perfect love. Here we're built up in love and fear diminishes. Staying in contact with each other is proving to be a real blessing, something that our busyness can cause us to neglect. Jesus said this, A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you may go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. There you go. So let's uh, let's just let's just close our eyes and pray. Mm. Our Father, thank you for all the things that we have been so richly given. Yes, Lord. The true wonders, Lord, of this world. Thank you that we are all very different, but all one body. Mm. Thank you for the gifts that you have given us, Lord. Help us to listen to your voice. Help us to explore the gifts that you've given and stir our spirits, Lord. Wake us up from our sleep and bring us into the fullness of all that we have in you. Lord, help us to step out and glorify your name. Thank you for the wonder, the glorious riches and the beauty, Lord, that is you. Yes, Lord. Amen, Lord. Amen. Church.